you, everyone. Good afternoon. Thank you. My name is Simran Batra. I'm an Associate Director at Thesis, a sustainability consultancy. And we were commissioned by the Council about three years ago to develop an evidence base for their Climate Action Plan. So I just wanted to give a bit of a recap of what you probably went through yesterday of Westminster's emissions. So in 2017, Westminster produced 2 million tons of carbon emissions. And what that really means for us is that 86% of that came from buildings. This is really important for us to know because then when we're targeting actions, we can target against where it will make the biggest impact. So from 86% emissions from buildings means our schools, our hospitals, our hotels, shops, and our homes and other buildings. Following that, 11% of emissions came from transport. So things like roads, taxis. Um, and this is all really important to help target our emissions, like uh, our actions, like I said. From all of these emissions, the Westminster City Council only actually represents about 2% of the emissions. So while the council can do a lot to uh, put together policy, influence change, convene all of you here. They really can't achieve these reductions on their own and need everyone to play their part in order to make this behavior change. In terms of our target for 2040, a really simple way to think about it is that we need this 2 million number to be as close to zero or zero as possible by 2040. So we did some analysis to see what does that look like and is that even possible. So what we did was we modeled the impact of action and inaction in Westminster to see where that would take us. And what we found is if Westminster just carried on as we did right now, we'd get about a 29% reduction by 2040. So that's what the red line is, this business as usual pathway. So if we just stayed the same now, what could we happen? And that's because there's national policy at the moment supporting climate action, and also the national grid is already decarbonizing. We're seeing the national grid put together solar, wind, um, and that's making a positive impact for Westminster. But then what we looked at was over 30 interventions and thought, if Westminster does them all, how far does that actually take us? And that took us to about 84% reduction by 2040. And so that's still not even all the way there, but that's what seems sort of feasible to do. And this is what our goal is, to get as far as close to net zero as we can by 2040. So in like practical terms, what types of actions does this mean? What we're trying to do is reduce our energy demand for heating and hot water. We also need to electrify our heating systems. We need to retrofit over 70,000 homes in Westminster in order to achieve this target. We need to also increase our energy efficiency in terms of lighting and appliances. We also need to rely less on gas for cooking. In terms of transportation, our modeling showed that we need about 94% of cars to be electric or hybrid by 2040, which is a lot. I can see someone's face just draw dropping. <laughs> and I know it is a big number to achieve. Um, and what that means is we also just can't have every car we have on the road right now become electric. We also need to reduce the number of cars that are on our streets by having more people walk, cycle, take public transportation as well. And then the cars that are on the road need to also drive for less distances as well. The next thing we looked at was waste. So this analysis didn't look at what we even buy or consume, but we know that we need to reduce our waste by 40% and increase our recycling by over 64%. Then a lot of the measures that we're going to take or that you'll probably talk through over these few weekends will be about reducing our demand on energy, but we'll still need energy to live, survive, work. So what we'll have to do is still increase the number of re local renewable energy. So what we'll see is local solar panels go on roofs and buildings to help support that demand. And then lastly, another key element is still protecting our green spaces. So we'll need to see actions that actually protect our current green spaces, but then also increase the amount of tree coverage in Westminster. So, as I said, that only takes us really to 84% reduction, and we're trying to hit 100 by 2040. So that kind of gives us that gap to target. So even all of those actions I've suggested that we could try to take, which seems a lot, we need to actually go even further than that. So we need to even go beyond the recommendations we've suggested, and that will require everyone playing their part. But there is hope that there is more national and local policy coming in place than when we first thought there would be. We're also seeing huge technical innovations as well, which might accelerate this change. And we're also seeing more and more people 
interested in climate and wanting to change their own behaviors to help support these types of initiatives. So when policy and technology comes in place, we need people to be ready to take it, to implement it, and use your own knowledge and perspectives to help organizations figure out how are we actually going to implement any of these actions and the reductions that we need. So the challenge is large, but we need every organization, not including just the council, but residents, businesses, organizations, companies, to all play their part to help contribute their piece of this pie to help get us to net zero by 2040. And so that will not only help us protect our planet, but will also get a better outcome that Westminster will be a better place to live, work, travel, we'll have warmer homes, cleaner air, more sustainable travel, and those are all things we want. So it still leads to a better society and city and place for us to live and work. But that is the scale of the challenge at the moment.